Hello again, and welcome to the PDDL Back to the Basics. After showing how tools could be used for planning, modeling, and diagnosing and debugging planners, uh, it turns out there is some demand for getting back to basics for how can you model different kinds of problems using uh, PDDL, the planning domain description language. For that, I recommend using Visual Studio Code and the PDDL extension. I will be using a repository with uh, multiple examples, and the link to that will be available in the description somewhere below the video. When you install the PDDL extension, right about here, it will be showing number of uh, recommendations. I recommend taking them all, clicking the buttons to change the various settings in VS Code to have a simpler life and be able to follow this quite efficiently. Now, besides the different resources you could find here and uh, creating a Hello World example, you uh, can select or install multiple planners. You can start with the uh, online hosted solver uh, but I'll then be using a more advanced planner. And, and again, uh, when the planner with that capability is available, uh, I'll put it to the notes below the video. So let's jump into it. We will go back to the basics. To do that, I've created a number of uh, test cases, which just reset quickly the view here. And I want to start with something, okay, not quite all the way back to basics yet. Uh, I want to show something motivational, the PDDL blocks world. Uh, it describes the situation where you have uh, one or multiple robotic arms and you have number of crates or blocks and they can be in very, very various uh, configurations. Let's actually look at a picture. It could look something like this. Uh, and the arms are supposed to move those blocks to uh, some different positions. How do you describe something like that? What do we have in PDDL is types for describing the, the objects with which we'll be working, then logical predicates, mind the uh, prefix notation, that on means the block A is on block B, then uh, we describe each block, whether it is clear on top or not, uh, whether it is on the table or uh, the robotic arm is holding it or whether the robotic arm is empty. And then four actions in this model, it can be modeled in many different ways, but uh, the one that's actually fairly understandable and it's also efficient for the solvers uh, consists of four actions picking up a block, unstucking a block from another block, uh, putting a block down to the table and stucking one block on top of another block. Now, each action is described by the parameters you will be using in the action. A precondition, all those conditions has to have to be met before the action can take place and effects the in this case you could really cause that call that a post condition when the action is done then the world is you know all of these predicates are true uh, but more generally we call these effects because uh, you will see later it's not just uh, logical facts that we'll be acquiring by executing an action so that is a domain description which is common for all situations and all possible goals. On the right hand side, we have uh, a problem specification and that consists of three major parts, the objects in it and goal state. Uh, objects just list the uh, types, the, the instances of objects of the time that we defined on the left in the domain then we describe all the things we know about the world and with a closed world assumption we only specify the uh, 
uh, the predicates that are true, and we don't need to specify uh, those that are not true. And then last, uh, you as a human uh, still have the, the chance to define the goal here. So you define some logical condition that the planner shall achieve for you. So I will just run it and you can invoke the planner, the selected planner using multiple ways by right clicking on either of the files and uh, selecting some options if the planner supports it. But uh, here we go. It did find a plan and the plan consists of multiple steps. They are all sequential. There is really no other chance because we have obviously just one robotic arm. But before diving deeper into uh, how can we modify the models or why did we model it this way, uh, I want to show you what's happening under the hood of the planner uh, because uh, obviously we just see the, uh, the end result here, but it's more interesting to look at uh, what's going on. So I'll invoke the planner with a Alt P shortcut and I've diverted the output of the planner uh, to a, a graph display. And now you can see the more interesting internals. You can see that the planner is using a search algorithm. It starts from the initial state that we've defined using the init statement in the problem file. And then it applies actions that are actually allowed by looking at their precondition. And in the first state, we can only do one of the two things. We can either unstuck blue or unstuck pink because that's the two on the top on of the pyramid. The blue line here, as well as the H value here, is the heuristic value of the state. And it uh, stands for number of actions that we estimate at this point to the goal. And you can see that by applying one action, the planner, or at least this planner, is not quite smart enough to recognize that it obviously got closer to the goal. Uh, that's because the heuristic uh, algorithm is based on relaxation, and in the relaxation we miss some of these things. But then uh, uh, it has to select which way to go, and because neither one uh, looks you know, better than the other, it has to arbitrarily select uh, one, one choice and uh, puts down the blue on the table here, and then it goes for unstacking pink from brown. And now it's holding on to pink and putting pink down and unstacking brown and uh, putting brown down. Uh, and we are basically navigating the, the space here until everything is on the table and we can start stacking it up to the configuration that we want. Those black states here, are states that are uh, dead ends, dead ends in terms of uh, we've been there, we are memoizing all the states that uh, we've encountered in order not to run in endless circles in the search. Obviously, each of these actions are reversible. Like you can see here, we could pick up yellow and then uh, put down yellow. So obviously that takes us back to where we were and there is no reason for pursuing that branch because uh, obviously it has this kind of a cycle in there. But if we go all the way to the bottom, we eventually stuck red on brown and we put green on top of it. And then we also said that we want to, that we want to hold on to, hold on to yellow. And that's exactly what we achieved. And that's why this final state of the plan looks the way it is. Now, this looks simpler. And the challenge here is, is the modeling language here uh, convenient enough so we could do uh, uh, some simple changes to make it much more powerful? 
and the uh, the challenge here is uh, can we just make small enough change to support having multiple robotic arms and how would that look like and i'll do it directly in here if you want to try it better pause the video now uh, because spoiler coming up i'll just start doing it so if we have multiple robotic arms you see that we are describing the hand by being empty or not without talking about which robotic hand it is we better start by declaring type and uh, i'll use the same language as it's used in the pddl versions of this that you might find on the internet they call it a gripper so gripper arm uh, is what we describe here and uh, Obviously, that's where we need to start using that type by giving the uh, hand empty predicate uh, the parameter gripper. So now we are describing uh, each of these. So just to show you which way we'll be using it, we'll say there is a gripper one and gripper gripper two of type gripper. And uh, basically, now with these two gripper arms, we'll have two instances of that predicate because we've kind of just uh, extended this by to a you know one-dimensional array here. Now, is there any other predicate here that needs to be described that way? Uh, well, not on table, not clear. These are clearly talking about blocks and their positions. What about holding? Uh, well, well, we'll see. So all of the actions will need that, that parameter. That is clear. Uh, so I'll just add it to all of them. Unstucking using a gripper, putting down using a gripper and stucking block on a block using a gripper and then everywhere where we had the uh, hand empty we will change it to hand empty g except for the declaration where we've done it already so i'll just modify them in a bulk that way now what do we need to change here so is the uh, hand empty gripper one true yes we better make it true in the beginning otherwise uh, actually let's hold on to that like that uh, and holding yellow uh, yeah so i think that we'll need to do that we are saying holding yellow, but where are we using holding? We are we are make we are checking it during a put down, so we better in a put down we better check that this creeper is actually holding to the block, right? It then wouldn't make sense if we if we held it by the other gripper arm and we put it down using this action uh, and then hand empty with the G like that. Okay, so holding, holding, stacking up. Uh, is there any other holding? Holding with two arguments, holding with two arguments, holding with two arguments. So if we did something wrong, we would be told doing something wrong in some of these errors. So that should work, should it? Uh, except that we should say that the goal is also involving the creeper one. So let's try to run the planner. Uh, the search tree will probably be very similar. Uh, let's check what I'm doing wrong. Let's put this back to the output. And output from the planner is saying undefined.
predicate and it turns out holding it needs to be declared here um and yeah there is a plan and if we look at what's going on actually from the very first look of it it doesn't look that much different pick up yellow we should be holding to holding on to yellow yellow is invisible here uh i oh am yeah, because the visualization perhaps is not ready for the, the other gripper the the thing with adding another gripper is that you would actually want to see it busy. Now, I didn't say that it's available at start here in the initial state, so obviously the planner couldn't have used it for anything. So if we make it available by saying it's empty in the beginning, uh, we now get a plan which, if we look at it, well, makes use of it tiny slight bit here and it uh, actually is taking advantage of it because it's unstuck in green holding on to green and then it's putting the grip one is putting green on red while red was uh, meanwhile being planted on brown using using the other gripper arm so uh, yeah it's using the two robotic arms in concert yet uh, you have a feeling that it could have been more efficient. So this is where the planner uh, goes for a simple uh, feasible solution first. But if you wanted to come up with more plans than, than one, uh, running harder to make it sweat and come up with a better plan, uh, the planner usually has a switch for that. So I'll toggle that switch on and uh, you can see how we are already getting two plans to look at and there should be at least one more so yes here we go there is a plan the, the first one that we saw that only uses the the arm for one block here it's using them slightly different way uh, at least three actions for the other gripper and this looks much more interesting it's now using the grippers quite alternatively and uh, this will be a much nicer concert to look at actually let's look at it so if we if we grab the plan from here and go to uh, a visualization tool again the link to this page will be in the comments uh, i have this the exact same problem file pasted here i try to get a plan from the online solver and uh, the online solver comes up with a plan that's actually not uh, that efficient, I think, because we now have a shorter looking plan. So if we, if we paste it in here instead and click execute, uh, it can run this visualization as a simulation of <laughs> what's going on in the plan. So yes, we end up with a tower of brown, red, green, and we are holding on to yellow. So what we've just done is that we've taken a uh, classic blocks world domain and made it uh, much more powerful by adding one more dimension to it by declaring another type. Uh, so now we can have uh, any number of gripper arms and uh, with slight, slight tiny surgic modifications to the model, um, we are now able to employ all of these arms with, without the, the model changing much, without having to write any other code anywhere, uh, recompiling anything when, when the domain just needs to be augmented like that. This is why we like the declarative nature of PDDL. And uh, voila, that's the uh, step number zero from the PDDL getting back to basics. See you at the next one.